Welcome back. Uh, we uh, set for our first uh, major conversation right here on The Breakfast. Now, with barely 48 hours to the conduct of the governorship and state houses of assembly elections, as you well know, uh, the Court of Appeal in Nigeria on Wednesday refused to restrain the Independent National Electoral Commission from reconfiguring the bimodal a voter accreditation system, Beavers Machines, in the ruling delivered by a three-member panel led by Justice Joseph E. King, it held that restraining the commission would constrain INEC from conducting the March 11 polls. The court in a unanimous decision held that stopping the electoral body from reconfiguring Beavers would adversely affect Sunday's elections. In fact, what the court said was that it would amount to tying I next hands. Now, in an application, Peter Obi, presidential candidate of Labour Party, had sought an order of court uh, to restrain INEC from tampering, in their words, with the information embedded in the bimodal voter accreditation system machines until the due inspection is conducted and certified true copy of uh, them issued. Well, later that night, INEC postponed uh, the governorship elections and state assembly elections slated for 11th of March. Uh, till the 18th of March, saying it will take the Commission five working days to reconfigure the beavers used for uh, the 176,974 1, polling units where voting will take place for the election. The court therefore ordered INEC to, to it also ordered INEC to allow uh, the applicants um, inspect and carry out digital forensic examination of all the electoral materials used in the conduct of the elections as well as avail them of the CTCs of results after fiscal inspection of Beavers machines. Um, we're glad to say joining us to look at the implications of this for the ongoing litigations over the results of the presidential elections. Uh, Mr. Biodu Shomi, he's a political analyst, he joins us via Zoom uh, in Lagos. Mr. Shomi, good morning to you. Thank you very much uh, for your time. Thank you for having me. All right, um, um, with this ruling by the Court of Appeal basically saying that INEC can reconfigure um, the bimodal voter accreditation system machines. Um, uh, do you feel that there is, there is um, it will affect negatively the chances of the legal team of Peter B and the legal team of Atiko Bukar uh, establishing that they may have had a different, a better result in the elections? Do they affect them negatively? Uh, well, um, I don't think so. If you see what um, was filed in court and the uh, injunction granted uh, to Peter will be basically we will never be able to hold um, uh, hold the gubernatorial elections you know for at least a minimum of three months the reason is this uh, you have 90 days to process you know the cases to the courts we have over 177,000 uh, uh, beavers machine and therefore to even go through those 177,000 Bibas machine, their lawyers cannot, are not for it. The number of forensic experts they bring in will successfully complete that, you know, within the time allowed by law to resolve the issue. So basically, what it means is uh, the gubernatorial will be able and no other election can take place in the country until Peter Bibas case is resolved. Of course, that cannot be acceptable uh, to the whole country and or to INEC. And uh, in any case, what will be lost? What is uh, Beaver's machine about? It's simply a database. It's a database to verify, you know, the uh, authenticity or the credentials of whoever is appearing uh, for to collect nomination papers. The nomination papers, no, the ballot papers, you know, were actually, the process of voting was actually manual. You Okay, uh, Mr. Show me your network is interfering. Can you hear me, sir? Beavers was used for it. Beavers was not used to tally the result. What Beavers was used for was simply for transmission. And since the information transmitted to Beavers or recorded by Beavers will be stored in the back-end um, server, I think that will meet the needs of um, the litigation. They have a right and they have a duty to make sure that 
the evidence um, which they hope to rely on is not tampered with. That is correct. But at the end of the day, can that be done in a different way? That is because I guess we have the old information in the back end part, in a way that to not be tampered with. Well, the source of the material being, you know, stored is from ECHA. And if it's from ECHA, they have already issued, you know, to all the parties to the election, including to the security services. So it is easier to check whether there are violations or infractions or some people have tampered with it. I think that's basically the only issue. In the court allow INEC, we will be in a situation where for the next three months, we can have gubernatorial elections. Governors will have finished their terms. Uh, speakers will have finished their terms. And many states will be without government and uh, legal government in a federation. That cannot be accepted. But I I'd like you to, you know, speak to this. Uh, experts say that INEC may have been forced to shift the polls. Uh, that's what some people are saying. Because the process of reconfiguring of the beavers uh, takes real time. And so the excuse that you need like five days uh, to reconfigure the process is false. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? In my view, we have 177,000 beavers machines located in different parts of the country. As Hein put it, at least 10,000 people to do this. The way the, can I make assure the whole country that look, we have ten thousand people to move around and get all these things done within uh, twenty four to forty eight hours. No, that is the truth of the matter. You need to look at how many. Yes, it won't take a long time to do one. Uh, the reconfiguring, I'm, I'm sure, will not take more than an hour for uh, per one. But do we have all of them in one place? No, they are all in different parts of the country, and people have got to around you know, to configure the limit capacity in terms of recruiting people to do it. Already they have some people um, to do that, and they would have to bring them in to get them done. So in reality, the five days to me is not unreasonable. They can get it done four to five days, but not in two days. Okay, um, um, Mr. Mr. Shomi, what, what um, some supporters of... Uh, the uh, two leading opposition parties and uh, two leading presidential opposition presidential candidates, what they are afraid of is that the information stored on the beavers uh, could be tampered with. Now, you said indeed uh, that, yes, you're rightly so, as said by INEX lawyer, that the data on the beavers is, is, uh, is safe. They even saw an affidavit to that effect and that they are uploading everything at the back end server. But Mr. Shomi, as we speak, the form EC8A that was meant to be electronically transmitted by simply taking the beavers uh, and just s taking a snapshot and uploading it to the INEC um, IREV, not all the forms still today have been uploaded to the IREV as we speak, not all. So w what backend server are they talking about if till now not all the form EC8As have been uploaded? to the IRF for public viewing. That's the number one. Number two, the irregularities with the pollution of results and the broad daylight robbery witnessed in some parts of the country where uh, voters cast their votes and then they saw different results. Um, it's cast a doubt on the sincerity uh, or the motives of the Independent National Electoral Commission. People don't trust them, you know. So when you hear the OB legal team using the word tampering with the device, people think that NINEC may have sinister motives um, before the, the, uh, the, the elections. They never heard NINEC talk about reconfiguration until uh, the OB and Atiku legal teams approached the presidential elections uh, um, petition court to ask for leave of court to inspect these materials. And then they heard these people talking about reconfiguration. So this is what may be driving the suspicion and the agitation, sir. Yes, you are correct. If you go back into history, since we've been having elections in Nigeria, almost all elections have been 
subjected to criticisms one way or the other by whoever is losing or the losers of elections. Um, we have that track record. Uh, the most widely accepted election, not subject to criticism or controversy, uh, I think was um, the, the, the election of um, President um, Jonathan, uh, when Jonathan succeeded um, Yaradwa. And that's probably the only one I can think of. So it is normal for politicians or those who lose election to complain about processes. The right thing, which they have done in many cases, because we have seen, we saw what happened in Oshun. You know, it's over this beavers also. When Oyetola was not happy uh, that he lost the election, he, he went to court, he challenged the issue of beavers, and the court found in his favor. And that's a good ref ref reference point on, on beavers. You know, the court found on, in his favor to the extent that Governor Adeleke had to appeal that decision. So, uh, the issue... But, but, but there were even issues with that because they said, sorry, sir, sorry, apologies. There were even issues with that because what we, we the, the um, complaint there is that um, there are conflicting printouts uh, uh, from INEC, from the INEC database, that what the other party got is different from what, and then INEC came out to say it was incomplete. So you have some issues there as well. You know, and if I'm to add to what, what I said earlier, um, the accreditation data is on the beavers to know how many of the registered voters came to vote. Correct. When you look at beavers, beavers is meant to do only one particular purpose, which is to be, you know, it, used, it, it succeeded, uh, um, what do they call it, uh, and the other card we were using Card reader. And Card reader. Yes. And the purpose is to store information to identify candidates. Because in the past, when we have problems, people complain they don't have their PVC and one thing or the other. They are allowed to use, um, use field incidents form. And politicians perfected the heart of using the incidents form to bring in votes totally with the number of registered voters, not number of accredited voters. So BIVAS is meant you know, to eliminate this fraud. To that extent, BIVAS successfully did that because it became impossible to vote without going through uh, using BIVAS um, for accreditation purposes. And in any case, the Electoral Act made it clear that what happened in a new world of it, um, it's, it, it's better the penalty. Why I never fail to adhere to that i don't know a situation where you have fifty-seven thousand registered voters and one party was given fifty-three thousand, the other thirteen thousand. If, even if you don't have the rest it's clear that there is over voting and um the losses that result should be annulled but that result was not annulled it was added to labor's uh, result that was our labor money to win lagos these are the facts which cannot be controverted go and look at a more world of his uh, uh, result, you know. So the fact of the matter is, politicians will complain, APC will complain, Labour will complain, all of them will complain. But what's the purpose of Beavers? Beavers is meant for accreditation. The idea of using Beavers for transmission was simply an INEC directive in his own manual, INEC um, election manual. It is not the directive of the law. If you look at the provisions of the law, particularly, you know, the election. Section 60. Read the whole of Section 60 very, very well. You realize that it has prescribed, I think 60 subsection 5, it prescribed clearly that INEC will decide the means how the results should be transmitted or transferred. They use the word transfer there. So you find that in the manual. That does not mean INEC should not com comply with its own guidelines. INEC should comply with their gu its own guidelines. But in a situation where the backbone server Owner, and I'm referring to the company providing, you know, the backbone technology to support INEC activities, claiming that they receive over 200 attacks. Please try and contact Galaxy Backbone, get some information. At the appropriate time, after the election, more information will be will be held in the public. If INEC is under enormous strain to uh, retain or to preserve the integrity of anything stored, you know, in the server, then INEC has a right, since it issued the guidelines, you know, to review it. And that's basically what I think happened in that situation. 
So at the issue of um, results, the results of the number of accredited voters were already known at the point of collation because they would look at the BIVA's results and everybody has taken the information down. It's already on the form ECHA, which has been signed by the electoral officer. So the number of accredited voters already known. We can always cross-check that with whatever information INEC store in the back-end server. That is the fact of the matter. Yes, INEC, look, we are in Nigeria. We have seen presiding officers doing what they are not to, trained or told to do by INEC. We are in Nigeria. Politicians will always try and corrupt the system. But the bottom line is the court has to decide what is right from what is not wrong using okay. all the available information. And I think that is the way to go. Still on the issue of the beavers, uh, INEC has rejected Labour Party's request to witness the beavers' reconfiguration. As a, as a matter of um, you know, fact, they are saying that uh, they are faulting the commission uh, of claims of backing data retrieved from the beavers without the presence of independent observers and political parties. Uh, I'd like to ask you what you think of the position. Would it be wrong to have, um, you know, agents of various political parties or some observers to, you know, look at the entire process of reconfiguring? It's a very complex situation. It depends on um, the number of uh, beavers machine, um, those candidates, all the candidates, or whichever candidate is applying. I'm trying to avoid being specific on a particular party. The problem is this. When we demand and say you want to check whatever information is there, the other parties in that election too have a right to be there. If that is what you're going to have to tell that, they all have to agree that that information is from that source. It's not from a different source. Should this happen, there will be no time to conduct the, uh, the, 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 the appeal hearing on the presidential election. There will be no time. Time will be out. They have only, it's time bound. So we've seen an example of that before. When Governor Baseki of Edo State uh, had, you know, filed a case in court, and eventually uh, it was, they couldn't conclude it because he ran out of time allowed, you know, to determine those cases. And that was how Obaseki, uh, um, uh, Obaseki won and became the governor. So if you are not careful, we may not even allow the judiciary to properly look into this because many of those cases will be time bound. They will, they will run out of time. But it is also right, INEC is also right to insist that uh, all the parties have to be there. Otherwise, um, each party will apply. INEC will have to keep making separate arrangements when in reality, um, if all of them are there, they could easily ascertain that that's from the, the information is from that source and that would clear all the matter rather than um, exacting pressure on INEC in different so reconf but, the reconfiguration I mean, of the uh, beavers, if that's going to happen, uh, the entire process INEC is going to embark on, do you think that, would you classify that as being transparent if this is going to be done uh, without anybody observing? INEC is supposed to be independent electoral body. All the political parties are partisan in the show. So INEC is is expected to be independent of, you know, the partisan politicking amongst the political parties. What we need INEC to ensure is that this information is stored in the back end server um, uh, correctly, and um, even if they want that to be supervised, I don't have an issue with it. But the process of reconfiguring, there is no way INEC can guarantee that political parties will trust that. I will tell you why. Now, will the political parties appoint people to go with INEC to different places to reconfigure an equipment and, you know, upload new data information into it? I don't think that is practicable in, in reality. That would not be practicable. Number two, will INEC be willing to bring all those machines into a particular warehouse to get them reconfigured? And do they need all the political parties? Don't forget, 18 political parties, you know, to actually be there to uh, to see uh, how they are configuring it. No, that's not what they want to do. It has little or nothing to do with them. It is basically about INEC getting the machines ready for the gubernatorial elections. They have already used it for the presidential elections, and the results should be transferred 
into the ANEC backend server. So the idea of um, uh, reconfiguring the, need, the machines to be used for the next election, I don't think uh, political parties have any role in that process. It is for INEC to do that um, internally and get them ready there and get them ready for the gubernatorial elections. Uh, Mr. Shomi, are you um, are you are you worried? You know, in any to any extent about the uh, the sincerity of Anakin through this process, uh, looking at the way results were rewritten, you know, rewritten by uh, officials of the, the, the electoral empire, including coalition um, officers in different local governments and, uh, you know, different local governments and wards across the country, you know, polling units results sheets were basically rewritten in favor of different parties, not just one party, but in favor of different parties. And um, the, the, the reaction of Nigerians in major cities in the country to the results announced, saying they could not recognize those results. And I mean, if you correct, correct, conduct some forensic research, uh, the results will defy all logic in some parts of the country. Are you, are you worried I, you know, about the sincerity of INEC through this process of uh, reconfiguring the BIVAS? ahead of the governorship elections? Well, I am, to be honest, I have seen quite a number of results, which to me um, are questionable. Um, some of the results seems to have been changed one way or the other. Those are the ones I found on social media. Well, social media is not the judiciary. They are not the courts. Until the court accepts that these results were changed, then that is where we Mr. Shomi, I'm asking about your personal your personal concern are. now, sir. Um, seeing yes. I'm, and I'm I'm not but talking about uh, Mr. Shomi, sorry, sir. I'm not talking about social media pictures. Yes. I'm talking about verified party agents result sheets that are in my possession, our possession, and are available to anyone who knows the party agent, and and very very clear handwritten. Um, manipulation or handwritten uh, changes to to the results. You know, we have incidents or instances where um, uh, local government coalition officers went missing for days, only to appear with results that people could not recognize, and INEC accepted them, citing the law. Very questionable results in different parts of the country. We're not talking about the conduct of the police or political thugs. We're talking about the conduct of INEC officials and the results that were released. I'm saying, are you concerned about the... I'm not talking about courts here. I'm talking about you, sir. Are you concerned about the sincerity of INEC in this process, looking at what happened following the 25th of February presidential and National Assembly elections? Yes, everybody needs to be concerned about um, infractions committed in any election. Um, it is difficult to see any election in this country without infractions. Some major of infractions always happen, but that is worrying. It, quite a lot of them should have been wiped off. Of course, we know the human angle. We are all Nigerians. Some people are tempted, wanting to uh, facilitate uh, Begin one way or the and yet they are, you know, hard dog staff of uh, INEC. I don't think the main INEC, uh, the commission itself, you know, it's involved in whatever infraction that. But when you look at those who framed the law, it is quite clear that we anticipated that there will be some level of infractions, and that is why the term substantial compliance with the electoral law is used. In this case, if there's substantial compliance with the electoral law and the INEC um, regulations, then the election is okay as far as the law is concerned. But personally speaking, I still think we need to do a little bit more to clean up the system so that even the infractions identified so far, you know, will never really occur again. I mean, it's quite very worrying because it's, you know, you can have problems in for local governments, which will undermine the credibility of any elections. And that is not what we want. We want 770, we have 774 local governments. So if you have problems in 10, 20, that is not, it does not um, affect the result of the election uh, because of the issue of substantial compliance. But 
how do we expect people in that local government, the affected local governments, to feel? They will continue feeling cheated. So this is why I am bothered uh, that we need to do a little bit more than what ANEC has done so far to clean up our system to prevent a situation where individual, you know, can change results. And the only way to do this is by prosecuting the offenders. We have to ensure that those who tampered with results are prosecuted. But, but Mr. Show, show me, Mr. Show me, Mr. Show me, INEC didn't follow the law. Sir, so you're talking about prosecuting offenders. Mr. Show me, INEC didn't follow the law by uploading the presidential yes. results in multiple cases. And it was observed that after the House of Representatives and senatorial results were uploaded, the machines could not work. They stopped accepting the the uh, presidential results. That's just one aspect. I'm not talking about changing of results by coalition officers and then the INEC um, uh, returning officer, both at the okay, state and national level, saying, I can do nothing about it, which is a lie. But looking at the refusal of INEC to follow the law, to upload electronically the results as contained in the Electoral Act 2022, which is law. No, that's not the law. Go and read Section 60 very, very well. Even read Section 60 in conjunction with Section 64 of the Electoral Act. That is not the law. Mr. Show me Section 60 subsection what, please? I can read it out for you. I have it in front of me. What, what subsection are we talking about, sir? What Please. subsection are we talking about? Sir? Section 60. Subsection section what? 60. Read section 60, subsection 5. Section okay. 60, subsection 5. All right, I'll read it. I'll start from subsection 1. It says that the presiding officer <laughs> shall count, sh after, shall, shall, after counting the votes at the polling unit, enter the votes scored by each candidate in a form to be prescribed by the commission, uh, as the case may be. We know what that is. Number two, subsection two. The form shall be signed. Uh, I'm just going to skip that. It's about signing and stamping the form. Uh, it says, three, it says the presiding officer shall give the, well, it just doesn't skip that too. Subsection five says the presiding officer shall transfer the results, including uh, the total number of accredited voters and the results of the ballot in a manner prescribed by the commission. This talks about electronic transfer of the results. In a manner. Really, yes, really but it's, it's, it's in, in, a in a manner. We know the manner, Mr. Show me. It is the commission. That, that's exactly what I'm saying to you. And we, and, and we know what the, the manner is. This is what we all clamored for, electronic transmission of votes. And it is clearly stated that you must, you shall, transfer the results, in the including manner, the total in number of accredited time. voters, and the results, you shall, right there. And the, 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 the in results... A manner, in a manner prescribed by the commission. If and what is the say, manner, Mr. Show me? What is uh, the manner, sir? The what is the manner? What manner the are we manner talking about here? Exactly. You know what led to this? You said that was the law, and I said that was in the law. No, but yeah. the, the law is clear. And it says that the, the, you, need to, you need to transfer the results. At that point, it must be transferred. And we know that the, the commission yeah, has, in its guidelines and regulations released in June 2022, that they will transfer it using the beavers. This is what Nigerians oh, fought that, for. Then you are not agreeing with me that that is INEC guidelines. It's in INEC guidelines, not the law as you The think. law says you should that transfer. It's That's talking about uh, electronically. You should yes. transfer electronically. So INEC will have to now decide yes, how. Be. What if they come up with a new technology tomorrow? No, At read, that point, Mr. Show me, this is the law. I'm reading in black and white. No, when I just read section 60, subsection 5. Which clearly stated that INEC will determine the mode of transfer. Okay, so Mr. Show me what happens if INEC transfer. does not transfer mm. the results. What happens? Where, Have they not broken the law? The result on the... In my view, no. That is what the court has to decide. No, the but, but you are saying the court has to decide. But it is in black and white, sir. No. Okay, I give you. I'll just give you a scenario. We voted. No. They did everything prescribed in subsection okay. 1 of section 60 up to section uh, 5. You transferred the House of Reps results. You transferred the senator result. And then for the, not the presidential, you said no. Have you broken the law or not? No, you have not. You don't understand. Let me explain it to you. When at the state level is where the coalition of all, all elections, apart from presidential, uh, exists. That at the, at the stage where you can object at the coalition level, which is the state level, 
to any results. Once those have been done, you can include them. For the purpose of presidential election, the collation done at the state level is not with the returning officer. The chief returning officer of the federation is the returning officer for presidential election, and that is done in Abuja. It is only when, after that has been done in Abuja, going through the processes prescribed in section 60, uh, 1 to 5, that INEC can now say they are uploading. And that's exactly Mr. Show me, this is talking about Abuja. section 60, talks that's about the mean. polling unit. It talks about that's the polling unit. Saying. And and if and, and if, if the if the agency refuses to allow its uh, its 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 workers, its staff, upload results, transfer results to it, then the law has not because there was no transfer. You need to transfer the results before you leave the polling unit. The law does not allow you, Sir Mr. Shogumi, the law does not allow you to transfer them at the ward level or the that is where collation is done. But at the polling unit, you don't do collation. You get the results, you sign the forms, you stamp the forms, and you transfer the results to the ward. The ward now takes it from the different units and collates and sends it to, like, uh, like, like Mahmoud said, to the local government. Let's say there are three levels of collation. Okay, so you don't transfer results at a collation point. You transfer it at the point where you count the votes and you sign the form in the presence of the party agents. Now, what you're saying is the law, the law is clear, Mr. Shomi. The law is clear. At the Voting point the at the polling as unit, as you transfer. As understood by you, as understood by me, the law is also clear. Look, one thing which is very clear, which you cannot dispute, is at what stage? Where do you have the returning officer for the presidential election? Is the chairman of the commission? Go and read the law. The INE chairman is based in Abuja, so you cannot collate the results with the returning officer not uh, based in Abuja. He is based in Abuja. And I mean, we're not talking about returning officer here. Of we are talking about presiding officer. You, you are the yes. one who brought section 60, sir. It doesn't talk about returning yes. officer. It talks about presiding officer. And that is found in the polling unit. And section 60 is clearly, basically, focused on the polling unit. On the polling unit, that is where the transfer takes place, sir. Polling unit, Look, and if you don't do that at the polling unit, place, you have broken the law. You have not no, done no, no, what no. is, is I don't it says you should do. That. You, you, you act. You are extending logic with what we are doing. Voting takes place at the polling unit. Yes, and right at the polling unit. Once the results have been compiled, yes, I make decided or INEC will decide the mode of transfer. That is what you read out. And what is That's the mode of transfer? Of what is the mode of transfer? Where, is okay, Mr. Show me but in section this. 60. Mr. Show me in section 60. If you allow, if in you section allow 60, me, sir, 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 just a quick question. Just a quick question. In section 60 uh, that you cited, where is the transfer meant to be done? At what point? If you will allow me, Section 60, subsection 5 clearly states that the mode of transfer will be prescribed by INEC. Where is the, is the transfer meant to be done, sir? Where? That is what I'm saying to you. The mode of transfer will be done by INEC. Will Where be is, sir, INEC. I, ask, I ask again for the last time, at what point, at what level, at what location should the transfer be done? You, you, you know, you, you are trying to pigeonhole Sir, me. I'm asking you, you a simple question. I'm not pigeonholing you. Are not you are on Zoom joining me from your abode. I'm here. I can't pigeonhole you, sir. At what point, under Section 60, you know, you should the look, transfer are, be done? Look, Where, it's quite sir? Clear. You are a very aggressive interviewer. You I'm are not allowing me to answer the question. You have behaved like Please go on. Please go on. I yield. I yield. Listen, show me. I yield. If you are the guest, you should Mr. Allow Shomi, I yield. You can answer. I, I yield. I yield, sir. I am not the guest. You have been one interviewing me aggressively without giving me room even to explain it. To explain Please my go on. I apologize. I apologize. Please go on. That I apologize. Totally unprofessional. No, sir. Yeah, I, I, I disagree. I disagree. Mr. Okay. Shomi, I know what you're doing. You, you, you're you trying to turn the tables on me. I've what asked you a simple question. Well. Everybody watching has seen I'm asking you a simple question, sir. You because know, so you can answer. You can answer. I just asked wrong, the question. If you are asking me questions, no, sir. Are, no, sir. You're, 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 go, you're going beyond. You're going beyond. You're going beyond what we're doing here, sir. Me. I asked you a simple maybe question. 
Mercy, so I asked you a simple question. I have not pigeonholed you. It's a simple. I just said I, 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 my only crime. My only crime, Mr. Show, you can't attack me, sir. You can't. My only crime was to ask you at what point did the section 60, which I have in front of me here, okay? says we should do the trans. That's what I'm asking you. And you refuse to answer. Look, How am I pigeonholing you? How am I being see, unprofessional? You can see how aggressive you are, you know, with... Uh, with but, no, you I'm sorry about that. You have to show me... Uh, you we... allow me to express myself. So that's the problem. You have to show me uh, at, at this point, I think we have to let it go. Uh, we're really out okay, of time, you. and uh, we do appreciate you uh, joining us. I appreciate your thoughts on the show this morning. Uh, we look forward to having this conversation as we, you know, inch closer uh, to cast a vote on the 18th of March. Uh, if you haven't gotten the message already, you should get it. Uh, we don't have any elections tomorrow, being the 11th of March, but up until the 18th of March, uh, it will be important. We we'll stay guided, and uh, let's just stay calm and see how all of this pans out. Once again, thank you, Boyadu Shomi, for being part of the show. Thank you, Mr. Shomi. Um, we, we have to move on for our next topic. Mercy, uh, we'll be right back. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll discuss um, the under-20 African Championships and uh, the 14th of the Flying Eagles. And of course, we'll also look at women in sports. That's remarked World International Women's Day. Stay with us.